Hey everybody, it's about June 16th, which is a little later in the month than when I did my May garden tour, but I finally got around to getting the camera set up and I can't wait to walk around and show you all what's been happening. We've had nice, warm, pleasant, mild weather this month, so lots of things have grown and really started to take off. I had some really great successes with my spring crops. I definitely also had some failures and I can't wait to show you. So let's start the tour. So first I'll show you what was right behind me. These are some of my tomatoes. You might remember that I had radishes planted here before in my last tour. So I dug all of those up. We had a great crop of radishes and I planted some tomatoes which are growing really, really well. Down the middle here, you can see that's all garlic and the scapes are just starting to, to pop out. And in a little while, we'll cut these down and we'll use them in all sorts of recipes. And that's gonna help the, bar the bulbs of the garlic grow really nice and big. And these tomatoes so far have been coming up wonderfully. My next step is gonna be to mulch and to stake them. And this bed definitely needs a lot of work. We have some tomatoes back here. And then behind those, you can see my Brussels sprouts, which have all bolted. I don't know why. This is my first year growing Brussels sprouts. It's a little disappointing. Then we have this celery. First time growing celery, heard it was difficult. The celery has really taken off. I have tons of it, and it's actually starting to bolt and go to seed as well. But I love celery seeds, so I'm just gonna let it go. And I'm actually gonna cut all of this down within the next, really in the next couple days, because I have these pepper plants that are planted really up close to the celery, because I anticipate to cut this down really soon and give them lots of room to grow. So I have other pepper plants here and some eggplant back there. And you can see the peppers are just starting to have all of this new growth. That's because I topped them off, which means that you cut off the top of the peppers and it helps them really sprout lots of new leaves and get really nice and bushy. I still have arugula coming in like crazy. You can see all of it here and this all needs to get dug up. We've been eating tons of arugula and salads and I'm getting kind of sick of it. Now here's what I was referring to last time as basil row. It's finally starting to come back. I planted it a little bit too early and what happened was we had lots of really unusually chilly weather and so much rain that a lot of it was starting to die as a result. So I lost my lemon basil, I lost some purple basil, but I replanted. I lost a couple other different varieties. This is this lettuce leaf basil that just gets huge, huge leaves. So I'm really happy that one didn't die. And then over here I have nasturtiums. Um, I haven't grown nasturtiums before, so I'm really excited for those. They have really peppery leaves and edible flowers. Thyme has started to flower. I love using these flowers as a garnish. They're really pretty. Then we have cucumbers that are starting to make their way over to these stakes that I have and climb. The herbs are all still doing really, really well. Pineapple sage is in bloom. Then I stuck a couple other little tomato plants back here. These are both zebra varieties. So one of them is a green zebra, and then that one is a black zebra. And so far, so good. Here's my rhubarb, which has gotten huge. Somebody commented last time and told me that it was gonna need a lot more room, and they were definitely right. Still have the parsley. I have chervil, which has always been tough for me to grow, but I'm really excited that it's starting to really come in nicely. Some cilantro that's struggling, some kale plants, and dill that's also been struggling. I had some, it looked like green aphids or some kind of little bug infestation. Some mint back here that has lots of room to grow wild. This I'm really excited about. So here's my chamomile. Last time I told you that I have always struggled to grow chamomile to keep it alive, even though others have said it's really easy, but this has so far stayed alive and we're actually starting to get some flowers. And then we have beans. Beans didn't sprout up quite as much as they would have liked, but that's okay. Some kale plants over here that have been struggling a little bit. You can tell something has just really been eating this one. This is a lacinato kale or a black kale, Tuscan kale, whatever you want to call it. I mean, look at these leaves. They've just been devoured. Here's another Brussels sprout that has bolted. And in the back here, these are mustard greens that are also going to flower. Here is some Swiss chard that's coming in really nicely. We've got some yellow stems and some purple and red stems. What I like to do is when these get really nice and big, I'll cut them down, I'll remove the leaves from the stems and I'll saute the leaves or do whatever, but then I'll take these stems and I'll pickle them. And they are really delicious and it's such a good way to utilize every single part of the plant. More arugula, as you can see. Chives are looking good, still getting some little flowers. And then my onion bed is struggling. These should not be doing this. First time growing onions, I'm a little stumped. I planted bulbs. Somebody please tell me what's wrong. I know they're going to seed. And actually I'll dig one up for you. They have teeny tiny little bulbs. 
Then over here is more garlic, beautiful, beautiful garlic. And you can see these scapes. They're so much fun how they get all twisty and twirly. There's a good one. Oh, this is a really good one. I can't wait to cut these down, make garlic scape pesto, throw these on the grill. Everything over here is kind of a mess. These greens have all bolted and are all going to seed. This kale actually, I had cut this kale down in the beginning of the season and I didn't pull up the entire root apparently. And this whole thing has grown from like a little nub in the ground, which is pretty cool. Then we have lots of lettuces, which all need to be harvested. This is a red speckled romaine, which is really pretty. And then these are different butter lettuces. Of course, more arugula. And then here are my peas. And these are totally ready to be harvested. They're super big. Look at that. Look at it. See? Beautiful little pea pod. More arugula. Imagine that. And then these are tomatillos. I have a pineapple tomatillo right here, which is sort of like a ground cherry or a husk cherry, if you've ever had one of those before. They're really sweet and tiny, and they eat like candy. And this is just a traditional Mexican green tomatillo. And these will get huge. You'll see in the next garden tour that I do, these are gonna be massive. More pepper plants that we have topped off and are coming in really nice. And then these are all beets, which are pretty much ready to harvest. Let's see. Look at that, look at that beautiful beet. I'm gonna eat that beet. Two things actually started growing and I'm not sure what they are, but I think there's some kind of a squash. I'm hoping a squash and not a pumpkin. I'm gonna be digging these up and relocating them. Um, if anybody has any idea what you think they are, let me know. Let's see if you can see it. I'm gonna good look. Let me know what that is. They have carrots back here, which are also looking really good. Let me pull one out for you. Look at that. That is a funny looking carrot. I never got to thin these out like I said I was going to. That happens sometimes. You have great intentions and you just don't get around to it. So then your carrots grow like that. Potatoes, I don't know. I backfilled all of these pots and they're starting to flower a little bit and we'll see what happens. Yeah, this strawberry bit has been really disappointing to me this year. I had an okay harvest, but for some reason all of the berries were getting these brown spots on them and they were starting to go bad and rot before they were even ripe. So we did get a few berries, but for all of the space that this takes up, I mean, this is prime garden real estate. I think I'd be better off planting something else. So I think I'm gonna rip all of these strawberry plants out and put in something else. I might try melons. I've never grown melons before, and I know they need some space, and maybe even a zucchini. Some berries in here hiding. Okay, see, there's still a few left. Look at that. Wow, see, that's a really nice looking one. Look at that berry. No bites, no brown spots. See, I don't know what's happening. So many of them had the brown spots and then you get one like this and it makes me really question whether or not I wanna dig all of these up in the first place. I might try some vertical strawberry gardening next year. So if anyone has tips on getting that started and if I should be saving some of these plants for next year, then definitely let me know. So that's it, that's your June garden tour. Thanks for sticking around and watching the whole thing. And I would love to hear your feedback and get some advice on some of the different things that I mentioned throughout the tour. I'm so excited for the rest of the gardening season. This is when things really pick up and start to get good. I'll see you next time in July for our next garden tour and hopefully I'll have lots of really awesome things to show you then. Maybe even some tomatoes. Till next time, I'll see you then.